Mist. That would be Niflheim, the realm of the dead. Not Avalon exactly, but the Norse equivalent. Ah, uh, yes, and it wouldn't be a Tomb Raider game if there wasn't at least some mythology to go around. Niflheim, as Laura said, is the Norse realm of the dead. Don't really have any information about that. Because I I know a few things about Greek mythology, but Niflheim isn't one of those. And a few others I've looked up. These paths will at times contain, uh, you know, contain treasures and I don't think we'll find any relics in them. It's much too valuable you know, to be hidden in this stupid path. Uh, you can break them with Laura's ma new melee attack, or you can just shoot them. And down we go. And here we go. Yeah, I really don't know that much about Niflheim. Other mythology... Uh, other Norse mythology figures, or figures of mythology, I do know a thing or two about. Be it from... Uh, what I've learned or what I've looked up. Kraken, or actually to be probably more accurate, one of his Norse you know, cousins, which names uh, I elude me, so they'll probably appear on screen. But I like the Kraken for well one particular reason. It's is it's it's unlike any other creature that has been around for millions for hundreds of years inside of a you know, inside of a ruined place and still somehow is still alive like uh, the serpents from uh, England in, Jap in Tomb Raider Legends instead of having it be dead of course uh, which would left us without a monster to uh, kill instead they made it blind which I think is a nice touch it's a bit of a middle way we still have a monster but it isn't immune to time Okay, over here, oh. we're going to have something new. A react adrenaline moment. Those replace the quick time events from Legends, where time slows down and you just have to get the hell out of there. And let's see, it doesn't seem to be blocking anything here. At least of this. Oh, there he is. Yeah, the Kraken is blocking the gears to this locking panel. Well, to this locking system that's keeping that panel, uh, keeping that platform uh, in its place. Which we don't want. We want that thing loose so we can drop it on his ugly head. So we'll have to go down, and I'm looking for it. A safe way to go down because I don't want Laura to just die from chipping damage. Luckily, that went okay. Oh, and yes, debris will hurt you. So watch out with that. That ca that caught me off guard, even though it didn't make me jump. Oh, slow down. Come on. Yep. Okay, the, the, mu the background music cut out for a minute, for a second there. Okay, now that we know what to do, I have some time to talk. Uh, and I will talk about uh, some... A uh, bit of a difficulty I will uh, be having with this game. And that is that I'll, whilst I'm less playing this, uh, my father is playing through the game on his own again. 
so we have to share the game so I won't be able to uh, make videos whenever I want with it so it might that might uh, cause some delay I forgot to pull the switch uh, yeah got the memory of a goldfish My thought, yep. <laughs> One little thing with between the differences uh, between how my father and I play is that he likes to look around a lot more than I do. I usually figure out where to go and how to get there quite easily. And with Thunderwolf, there are practically, well, at least in this area, there are mul mul multiple routes to get to where you want most of the time. My father usually explores the entire place before he go uh, was looking around. What we need to do here is pull this out. Plus, my father ha also has a 3D screen, and you release the you know, grappling hook with control, by pressing you know, crouch. And yes, this game has 3D functions. So my father can, watch, can play this game in 3D, some similar to with the 3DS and such, and uh, movies like Avatar. And I have to say, he says that it's pretty damn awesome, in, in his own words. And because he isn't really the kind of person to use that kind of language, or those that kind of words, more or less, would be a bit better. And I have to say, these graphics in 3D, that would be pretty damn awesome. Now that the platform above the Kraken's head is loose, we pull this to raise it. Because, of course, we can't just drop it on his head like that. We need to have the maximum amount of force behind it. Be it from get it getting launched, or just from dropping it from a high place. Because even though it isn't really attack, well it has attacked us, it's pretty obvious. And it's getting in our way, we still want to kill it in the most painful way possible, at least avail that's available to us. Yeah, accurate aiming like this isn't really used that often, and Laura moves very slow while it's doing it, so it has no, no real combat you know, usage. That always turns me off. No, 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 that, that would come out. Right? That always stinks me a bit. That because you had, you, it is pretty damn painful, no matter how what you are and how old you are. And we can use the grappling line to get down like that, of course. Now, if it hadn't been in our way, we probably could have you know, gone around it. Because it's a, it's a beast. It's a beast. It's just a, a beast that follows its instincts. Attacking Laura wasn't really something we could blame it for. Uh, here, climbing. Laura can now uh, climb walls like these that we similar to uh, those we would find at uh, sporting halls, climbing walls. I don't know what they're, how they would be called in English and such. And you, you just press a direction and Laura will go that way. If she doesn't, that means she can't get hold of her foothold from where she is. So you probably have to send her down or up a bit. And usually she automatically goes in the right direction. Like there for a moment. She wouldn't go to the right. So I had to let her go to the down a bit. To the down a bit. <laughs> okay, that sounded stupid. Okay, and balancing. Just to uh, keep your balance, nothing much else. Oh. And even if you fall, Laura usually catches herself. So, not a big deal. She made her saving throw. And I, <laughs> I wasn't trying to do that flip there where she got off. There's, there, Laura still has access to a couple of... Yeah, there we go of her like athletic tricks
Thor, the Norse god of thunder. Whatever are you doing down here in Niflheim? According to the Eddas, Thor needed special iron gauntlets to wield his mighty hammer, Mjolnir. Could it be? Ah, yes, of course. The puzzle to open a door. What we need to do here is... Well, she climbs pretty damn fast on up these things, like a spider. Shouldn't have said that I really don't like spiders. And yeah, here it says to use cat lock to throw the blocks. So, there we go. That's how we solve this puzzle. We need to get the... Well, not this part of the puzzle. We need to throw these blocks out of here. And if you notice, Laura's feet face a bit through the plate when she stands on it. So once those two are out, we get out ourselves. Don't know if you can get crushed by those, but I'd rather not try. No. Mjolnir. Thor's legendary hammer. The one that could shatter mountains. Uh, I think I'll keep off. Yeah, since we're going to get into a cutscene here, I'll talk about it right after this. Oh, what, what an idiot I am! We need to put both of these on the same plate. Getting distracted by my own chit chat. So, put it on down. And here we go. But because we need to pull this thing open, we do this. The grappling line can go across corners now. So, there we go. Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, was powerful enough to level mountains. But how does all this relate to Avalon? Put your hands on your head. Turn around. Slowly. I don't suppose you'd be open to bribery, would you? <laughs> Yes, and that's Seal ruining the party, as I like to call him. He is a minor character that doesn't get named, but I just call him Seal. Though so one other word I would have, one other name I would have for him would be Soap. Somehow I get a vibe from him that's similar to the Soap from Modern Warfare 2. Don't know how though. And yes, the woman she was talking about, Amanda Evers. Amanda was an old friend of Laura's from back in their days at the university, but a freak, a freak accent. No, oh, come on, Laura. And I'm out of medicap. I'm out of healing. And a strange act an accident, or incident would be a better word, at uh, Paraiso and the dig site in Paraiso, Peru, left uh, left Laura's all of Laura's friends. Who, all, almost all of our friends, and seemingly Amanda dead by some sort of mist demon, shadow demon would be a better word, uh, description. Laura thought she saw Amanda die and drown because she got stuck in rubble and the water just got too high and eventually Laura had to give up and you know, get out of there or risk drowning herself. Is it just me or did Laura regain a bit of health? Now it seemed, uh, later on, years and years later, this guy shows up again. And it's one of the divers, not Seal. 